I got out of the military in 1993. Uh, I was Marine Corps. I got out and I knew that I wanted to have a career in law enforcement. My mother was living in Victoria, Texas at the time and I called the police department and they informed me that I was a couple days late on the application that I wouldn't be able to apply for police officer. However, they were starting a reserve program and they would like me to be there, you know, to come and apply to be their first reserve officer. And they had me take a test and run the obstacle course. When I got back to my mother's uh, apartment, they called me and said that they were glad that they had received my application in time to apply for police officer and uh, I was the first police officer hired that year under the new chief of police. There is no stop to the guy. He, he'll just absolutely work until there is nothing left at all to do and then some. I, I knew that I, I wanted to go to work for the state police. I'd always been fascinated by the Texas Rangers and knew that at some point I wanted to do that, but I knew that I needed to have a pretty lengthy and stellar law enforcement career before I could apply there, so was fortunate enough to get hired by the Victoria Police Department. I would often drive through neighborhoods. If I saw people outside, I would stop and get out of the car and talk to them. I just so happened to stop at a residence in Victoria. Well, that turned out to be the wife of the Texas Ranger that was assigned uh, there in Victoria at the time. So that Ranger happened to drive up and so I asked him, I said, so, you know, one day I want to go to DPS and what's your advice as far as, uh, you know, what I can do to help my chances of becoming a Texas Ranger? And, and his response was nothing short of what I expected was, you know, work hard, live a clean life. And so um, it wasn't very long after that, I got a letter in the mail notifying me that I had been, uh, been accepted into that DPS Academy for 1999 and was stationed uh, just outside of Victoria and Edna, Texas in 2000. I got uh, busy with uh, drug enforcement on the highway and some of the narcotics folks and the ranger personnel obviously knew of me and knew that I, I was never a person to say no. I was always the one that was willing to work or work extra. Uh, not for any other reason other than I just like it. Uh, at some point, uh, I think it was around 2004 as a trooper, I decided I wanted to advanced my career, wanted to do something a little different and completely transitioned my career from the Texas Highway Patrol to the Executive Protection Bureau. Uh, I was absolutely um, fascinated that I had an opportunity to do that. It was uh, a completely unique um, challenge. The people that I worked with, the opportunity to work with the governor, it was an absolute honor and privilege to be able to do that. So after about a year's time, and I believe it was October of 2005, I promoted to the Narcotics Division. And I remember the phone call very, very well when uh, the person called me to tell me that I was being promoted and asked me where I'd like to go. I asked him what the openings were, and when I heard McAllen, I said, well, I want to go to McAllen. We worked major uh, international drug trafficking organizations, so the complexity of the cases kind of blended into the complexity of the cases that rangers, uh, or that in my experience, rangers found themselves investigating. And it was obviously a very exciting opportunity to work those kinds of cases. So I met the local um, ranger company commander, which was then a captain uh, in the ranger division. And I expressed to him my interest in promoting into the ranger division. I spent probably the next uh, five days and took vacation and studied everything that I could possibly get my hands on related to criminal investigations um, and took my test. When I found out that I had been uh, accepted to the oral interview board, I felt pretty confident a few days later. I think it was actually uh, two days later, um, I received a phone call from the Ranger Chief advising me that, uh, that I was promoting to Ranger. I, uh, I first met Gary whenever he and I uh, had promoted, and I could just recognize right away that he just seems to have life squared away, priorities in order. And, you know, the Rangers recognized that, and even as new Rangers, uh, he was approached on a, you know, a special operations group that were, they were forming. We were barely even Rangers, and Gary was asked to, uh, to be a part of that. So, naturally, people see that in Gary. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in this position because I care about people. 
Uh, I want to help people's lives, and that includes my fellow law enforcement officers. Gary would be the kind of guy that people would pick up the phone and call and rely on for a little bit of advice. A guy like Gary, well, Gary is the guy that sets the standard for a lot, a lot of rangers. Uh, and Gary knows, uh, and he loves it when I tell this story, and he's heard it several times. And it was, he and I were next, uh, we were brand new rangers, we were going through firearms uh, training, and uh, he and I had gone to dinner the night before, and the food was not cooked all the way through. We did not know that. So we're at the uh, firearms range. We hadn't gotten started very long at all. And so he unstrapped his vest and I asked him, I said, hey, are you okay? Gary uh, reproduced his dinner from the night before there uh, on the range and it was uh, in dramatic fashion. And uh, it was funny. Uh, so <laughs> Gary had a severe case of food poisoning. And I mean, after two days of being in the hospital, Gary joined us back out there on the firing line once he got rehydrated and he was just right back at it. And those were not easy days. And so I knew, number one, that he was dedicated, that he, uh, he, could, uh, he could take uh, being laughed at with humility and style. My way to mitigate stress is to um, play jokes and pranks on my friends. And there's, uh, there's times where, yeah, there's pranks. And then there's times where, you know, he'll send me a, uh, just a quick email or something like that, and it, it, it makes you realize the humility. You just can't take it serious, and it just causes us both to laugh. Uh, it's a pleasure to work with him, and it's uh, just because you know where his heart is, you know where his drive is, you know exactly what it is that he's going to do, and there's no compromise. One of the proudest moments um, that I can recall in my law enforcement career was when they actually presented me and, and pinned on my, my Ranger badge. The Ranger badge is made of uh, Cinco Peso. And if you ever look at, if you've ever had the opportunity to look at the back side of one, which I had prior to getting promoted, uh, is it's actually got all of the original, the coin impressions on the back side of that badge. Very, very honored to be in this position and to have the honor to wear this badge. I just say congratulations to Gary because he is just, uh, you know, it's, it's deserved, it's well earned. Uh, he is just an absolute pleasure to work with. He's a stand-up guy. He's a hell of a ranger um, and a leader within this company. Hello, I'm Graham Jones, Executive Director for the 100 Club of Central Texas. I just want to congratulate Ranger Phillips on his Lifetime Achievement Award on behalf of the club. You know, Ranger Phillips uh, has many accomplishments. Uh, he's very, very well respected throughout the state of Texas. He's worked with many agencies throughout the state. I actually had the opportunity to work with him on several investigations and saw firsthand his level of responsibility, his level of dedication, his professionalism, and how much he relied on his training and experience. So congratulations, Ranger.